Morning guys, Gaius Hennen from the Shelter Institute here on day four of our Woolwich build. Today the SIP walls are arriving from our panel manufacturer in Rhode Island and our objective is to finish hanging all of the gypsum on the outside of the walls and get well into installing the SIP wall panels. Vinny pulled in at around 9.30 with a full tractor trailer load, got everything unloaded and into the door yard, as we say here in Maine, and we were able to start processing panels and getting them ready for installation. The panel company likes to mix up all the panels, so the first couple of hours we spend just trying to find the panels we need. <laughs> it's kind of fun. Should we start putting drywall? I'm assuming you're gonna want me to hang some drywall. My preference would be to start on the back. It just occurred to me that we don't have our beams for the building. Um, go get them. It would be nice to have those. What do you need? The eight by eights that we want to trailer to build the panels on. You know what they look like, right? Yep. Dirty, old. Yeah, they're large. Well used. What are these? These are for assembly, just so we can work on the ground here without scuffing them up, or if we got to skim them around, it's a lot easier to do on these skids. The type of prep work that we do for the roof is a little bit different than the type of prep work we do for the walls, in that when we're prepping walls, we like to build large sections. So we bring a couple of old timbers from the shop, lay them down in whatever space we have, and we're able to then build sections of walls that are 8, 12, 16 feet wide on those timbers. And that is, in fact, what we did today. Are those um, shoes, did you, did you run them out to the end so that my buck comes down like this on, yeah, on top so of yours? the buck goes all the way to the bottom. Oh, the buck goes to the bottom. Yeah. Okay. An issue that we've run into on almost every job site is that we do things a little bit strangely when it comes to a timber frame with a SIP enclosure and that after the timber frame is up, the first thing we do is hang gypsum and that is completely opposite to typical construction. So usually the gypsum doesn't get installed until the house has a roof on it. Uh, but when we're installing SIPs on the outside of the timber frame, we want to get the gypsum in between the SIP and the timber frame so that the posts can expand and contract seasonally without opening up any gaps. So we don't want to have a butt joint between the gypsum and the post. The way to avoid that is to run it continuously on the outside of the timber frame. Got it. So one of the challenges of hanging gypsum on the outside of the timber frame is that it's very awkward. So we're dealing with four foot by 12 foot sheets and it's relatively easy to hang those on the first floor level, but then we get up onto the second floor. We're having to cut them to fit the gable end and just sort of suspend the sheets of gypsum against the timber frame on the second floor level while we get them nailed into place. It's an awkward operation. We try to generally just put gypsum on one wall at a time and then swing the sips in behind them so that we don't have that out for a while. If you can pull in a little bit more with your left hand, quite a SIP yard going on right here. So we're well into the SIP installation process and I just wanted to talk a little bit about what we're doing here on the ground. We don't like to just pick up a single four foot wide panel and swing it onto the building because that means a lot more work on ladders as far as the connection details are concerned from one panel to another. So generally when we're looking at the panel plan we're balancing two things. One is that we'd like to put together a group of panels that contains a window within it so that we have a more or less complete structural assembly to pick up. And then we also have the capacity of the crane. The crane can't pick up an infinite weight, obviously. So generally we're putting together sections of panel that are eight to 16 feet wide. When you're pre-assembling wall panels like that, it's very important that you check diagonals 
on the wall panel assembly to make sure that it's square and it will then fit onto the timber frame. All of these vertical seams represent panel seams and you can see here a horizontal seam. On the surface of that wall assembly, we'll have a piece of OSB spline directly behind the exterior OSB skin. And that spline is what joins the two panels together structurally. The panel manufacturer actually cuts that groove for us. So we would insert a piece of spline into this groove. And when it's fully inserted, it will stick out two inches. The next panel joins on. So they sort of share that one spline. And then we mechanically fasten both of the sips to that one spline. This groove here is for the foam. So part of the detailing that we do before we install panels is drill a hole through the OSB just outboard of the spline groove that pokes through in this foam groove. This is where the drill enters the exterior OSB skin and we're drilling on an angle so that the drill bit breaks through right here in the foam groove. Once the two panels are assembled, we'll put the foam can in there and spray the expanding foam. As the foam expands, it travels in this direction and the mating panel will have a similar foam groove. That continuous foam makes the assembly airtight. The last thing we'll do is drill holes in the exterior of the SIP assembly where all of the SIP screws belong so that when the panel is put in place against the timber frame, it's really just ready to be attached and there's minimal ladder work then for detailing the attachments. Looks like Gabe's getting ready to add in a wire chase, perhaps. That's usually what we're using that long drill bit for. If there's one that's missing or put in the wrong spot, we'll drill a circular hole to recreate that wire chase. If you're curious about these details or you want to learn more, we do offer an in-depth SIP class that you can take online now that goes into detail of all of the attachments. So this is the device that we use for lifting the panels. We call it a meat hook. We have these custom made for us. It's basically just a sharpened end that lets us drive it through the OSB. We like these because we get a good amount of bearing area on the OSB so we don't damage the OSB while we're lifting it. And it also allows the person on the roof to very easily and quickly disconnect the panel once it's in place. Is this our center line? Oh, geez. You're on the post right now? Well, I mean, it's flush to the outside of the post. It is. Yeah. Okay, so not gypsum. All right, that's spot on, 12 feet. You think that's the outside of the post there? So I've got 12 feet, one eighth of an inch here. So we'll come a 16th your way. Loving my position here. Double-sided arrow, boom, adjustment made. Okay. We've got a sill plate that runs around the perimeter of the building. On top of the sill plate is a shoe and the panel sits over that shoe. That's ultimately what ties the timber frame to the foundation but the load path is through the SIP screw. So once we have the SIP installed on the shoe, we chase that up and drive a proprietary SIP screw through the SIP and into the timber frame. And that's what locks the timber frame down to the foundation. So go ahead and smash. Oh, that's good. You gotta come around and get this from this oh. side. If you like our YouTube content, go ahead and smash that subscribe button. Oh, does that just seem angry? That hole that we punch into the OSB, into the foam, gets filled with expanding foam after the hook comes out.
Beautiful. <clears throat> Might try just tapping the bottom in over here. A little more. It's moving beautifully. All right, I think that's it. This, this is the final panel, right? Um, maybe we just put all of this together. One whole big unit. Big unit? Yeah. You're in? Yeah. We gotta just push it in a little bit. So you had about a half down here? Yeah. Yeah, down low was at a half. Oh god, yeah. Up here we got 311. Thank you. I think I'm gonna trim it a little bit. Just a little bit. Just to be safe. Yeah. I'd rather gap it out a little bit there than... And we are... Just gonna miss that post. Okay. Can you just, uh, you know, put it right at zero there? What we found through the years is that even though each of these panels is theoretically exactly four feet wide, by the time you take two pieces of OSB and glue them to a foam core, you know, if those exterior skins are not perfectly aligned to the foam core, they occupy more than four feet of space. So we found that on average, it's about 48 and one eighth of an inch. So in this panel that we're building, we've got six or seven panels screwed together. And so we've grown six or seven eighths of an inch. So after a long run like that, we find we have to trim it back approximately an eighth of an inch per panel to end up with a true dimension measurement. Want to swing this beast, George? Yeah. Good to go? You want to turn it here or on the other side there? Uh, yeah, why don't we try and turn it here, Ethan? Bring it down a bit. That started. Right. Gonna bring her down just a little more. Good. Happy over here we are, aren't we? Yeah. I mean, the bottom could come in a tiny bit, maybe. Do you wanna just try tapping the bottom over before I fully commit? I wonder if there's a way to like hook on to this board and try the ratchet strap. Not ratchet strap, but our little uh, to try and just rack the top of the wall over. Like, and connect the to the well, frame? Uh, I'm thinking that, that buckboard on the outside and the rafter. Oh, yeah. Yeah, if, if we were to nail the shoe or put screws down low, we could maybe probably. The top. I'm not sure that's at all possible. Between some pressure there and maybe tapping it, we could get it to move a little. Yeah. Worth a try, I guess.
way better. So I'm looking for 12, 14, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Got it. The old flip and send. So we're working on the north wall from left to right of the 24 by 24, and they're working on the south wall left to right, I believe, of the big building. And so you'll, you'll do this one next? Yeah, I think so. Could come out to me, George, about a 16th or so. That way, 16th? Uh, this way. This way. Yeah. Would you mind checking that uh, dimension upstairs? We want to have seven inches off the post. We've also started working the gypsum on the inside of the building. So that involves just from the inside of the building, cutting out the window and door openings, screwing the gypsum into the inside skin on the sip, and that is well underway. So we're in good shape. So this wall is, you know, that side of the garage, of the uh, yoga studio. Yep. So we could also work with this. Anyway, we have two building stations, so we'll probably get started building this and this. Like this whole thing could be built as one wall on this space. That's fun. Yep. Not so here. Where do you want to break that up? Probably here. Three sections? 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, then. And 15, pardon me, then. We can't do it in half? Half and half? We could, yeah, we can do that. We miss out on free bucking those big units, but I don't think that really matters. Yeah. This is super accessible from the inside, as is that.
thinking like. Yeah, I would put them put them a little close together because. Same panel. Mm, mm, yeah, just like that. No, like that. Yeah, perfect. Oh, that's too close to the top, I think. Too close? I think so. I think it's just going to be so heavy. You just waited until I did it. I, well, I didn't think you, you want to put that a board high. under it. Well, why would I? What? I don't know. You know that's crazy. It's my first job site, Gaius. It'd be nice to me. Sorry. You're doing a great job. Just not not with the hooks. I'm really more of a drywall decking guy. Roy, Roy, Roy. Ooh, I almost just kicked that. That's. I just. I would have understood if you had, but I'm so glad you didn't. Nice work. You want me to put that board up under him? You know, I yeah. Let's let's not take chances. Especially you would feel stupid if it falls after Jeez. I offer and you're like, no. No, we don't need that, Gabe. It's plenty strong. You don't know anything about engineering. It's not what I sound like. Should be seven off the timber frame. Yeah. Okay. Um, mum, 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 mum. Let me let me try this. You ready? Hold on. Thank you. As you can see on this install, we're not installing any uh, water resistant barrier. We sometimes do. In our opinion, it doesn't make sense to put that WRB on as we're installing the SIPs because the wire chases are most accessible and easiest to find from the outside of the building. So of course, if we cover that up with the WRB, it's very difficult for the electrician to find it. And in addition, the electrician will end up cutting many holes in the WRB in order to access the wire chase. So our preferred installation is to not put a WRB on, get the SIPs in place, let the electrician come in, work their magic, and then the WRB can be installed and unviolated uh, as a result of the work that takes place after the WRB goes on. This panel here, 
Yeah, favor my side, obviously. Obviously. Well, no, actually, probably that's the center of gravity, essentially. Because you got that other panel out there with a the buckboard in it. Right. So you, but the center would be that line. Yeah, I think this panel is the center of, of gravity. This, yeah, yeah. Centroid, if you will. Have you ever seen a worse hook job? Yeah. I didn't know we were competing. Was it the last one that I did? <laughs> a little lower even. Yeah, right there. Boom! Friggin' nailed it. I'm gonna tap it over first. I gotta come down quite a bit. Nice work, Ethan. <laughs> what do you think? Looks pretty good. I do want to shift just a little bit that way, but. I could, the bottom could come over a little bit more too. Okay, yeah, I only need maybe a quarter inch at the most. All right. That looks good up here. Okay, it looks good yeah, here. Right on, yeah. All right. So while we were able to get several thousand square feet of SIP walls on the building today, there are many details that we're paying close attention to. The most important thing is to make sure that we're installing the SIPs in an airtight manner. Much of that has to do with the way in which we foam the building. So as we're putting the sections together on the ground, we're being very careful to put in enough foam to fill all of the voids. Once we join two large sections together on the building, we then have to foam that uh, seam in place. So there's a little bit of ladder work involved. But we're able to get these sips on so quickly because we have been doing this for years and years. And we've developed systems that allow us to do a very good job installing the sips, but also install them very quickly.
We're at the end of day four on our Woolwich build, and today was all about sips. We have officially entered the ugly duckling phase on the timber frame where it's largely covered by the sips. We got on about 95% of the sips. Much of the detailing is also done. A lot of the foam, as you can see behind me, has been injected into the panel seams. It is expanding out, which is a good indication that we filled all of the voids between the panels. Tomorrow we will start by setting roof panels. We have a little bit of a logistical issue, which is that the wall panels that remain all exist above a roof surface. So in order for us to set those walls, we first have to put the roof panels in place. So tomorrow will largely be about setting roof panels. And then as we get those set, we'll be able to finish installing the wall panels. Thanks for following along and watching our progress on the Woolwich build. If you're liking what you see, don't forget to smash that subscribe button. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Now, can you, can you run up and like just punch <laughs> one of those things off the wall? <laughs>